very good afternoon to everyone and uh, I feel honored and privileged to be part of this TEDx event. Thankful to Gujarat University and in particular the Indian Institute of Sustainability for inviting me. Well, uh, given the uh, nature of the audience, the young uh, minds that are there, so I have tried to keep my lecture or my talk on the lines of something which is very close to my heart and that is on India's economy. So the topic that I would be speaking for the next 15 minutes would be mostly in the context of sustaining India's growth story, the challenges and opportunities that exist. Well, uh, India is today a dominant player in the global economy. We all know this is facilitated by our flourishing service sector, our strong industrial base and robust macroeconomic growth or macroeconomic fundamentals, something which none can actually ignore. We are the fifth largest economy in terms of GDP and if I consider the GDP growth of the top four, US, China, Japan and Germany, India's growth rate is much higher and will continue to be higher for the next few years, which automatically means that by next year, India is likely to cross Germany and by 2027, 2028 may become the third largest economy in the world. Not only in terms of growth, in terms of the size of opportunities, India has the or has the undoubtedly the largest developmental opportunity for the future, which is fueled by the sheer size of the population and the young demography that we have. Well, these are all positive sides for the Indian growth and Indian economy. And if we consider the post-COVID period, then India's growth has been continuously on the increase compared to many other countries in the world. So what has triggered this growth paradigm in the Indian economy. Some might say that it's a base effect. We are calculating a percentage. So if in COVID period your growth is low, obviously in percentage terms it should be high. Even a small absolute value will going to translate into a high percentage value. Some may say that we have changed the base year and the base year has been changed in such a way that it will facilitate a high numbers. Let's not go into those aspects because when we calculate the growth rates per se, the percentage, any negative side that are there normally gets neutralized. So therefore, from a pure growth perspective, I can say that two factors have dominated India's growth trajectory in recent period. The first one is the public capital expenditure and the second one is the household consumption spending. So if I consider the first one, in the recent budget, the government of India has increased the capital expenditure target by a whooping 37.4% to the tune of 10 lakh crore rupees. That is what is being proposed for the union budget of 2023-24. Something which in previous periods was simply unheard of. Obviously, high spending in capital expenditure by the government as opposed to current consumption has a positive implication in terms of the multiplier effect on your GDP. The second factor on which I would like to stress a little bit, because all of you who are sitting in this room are the contributors to India's economic growth story, including myself, and that is the household consumption spending. Well, 
this is a something very important issue and very close something to my heart. What contributes consumption? We often say that it is my income which increases my consumption. But actually, if you look and go a little bit deep, it is not the income, but it is your expectation. And there is a huge branch of economics nowadays which focus on the role of expectation in policy making, in consumption, in GDP, and in many factors. I give as an example. Suppose there is worsening of the war situation between Israel and Hamas. Suppose there is worsening of the war situation between Russia and Ukraine. Or there is some sort of a global turmoil, some geopolitical tension. All of us sitting in this room, none will be directly affected. But we will see and we will read in the newspapers every day that something bad is happening in the world. And although our income is not being reduced, we tend to be thrifty in nature. We tend to save more rather than consume more, anticipating something bad will happen in future. And as we start consuming less and spending less, this will going to have a repercussion on the production side of the economy, on the supply chain. There will be an uninve uh, I mean, unintended accumulation of inventory stock, cut in production, rise in employment, and then you anticipated that you will lose your job. So therefore, you started saving more rather than consuming more. And actually, you will end up losing job because of the cut in production. So what we say is, in policy parlance, that my expectation has become self-fulfilling. Now, coming to this growth perspective, it is just the reverse of it. There has been, over the last 10 years or so, and particularly over the last three, four years, lot of positive vibes about the Indian economy. Which basically means that people are anticipating that something good will happen in future. And anticipating something good will happen in future, Indian households start on a spending spree. Who have houses, they start buying more houses who have cars start buying more cars, and there is a consumption boom in the Indian economy. This has a positive effect. Production is happening, GDP is growing, and with a multiplier effect, people is getting money, and everything is such a feel-good factor. Well, this cons consumption expenditure constitute roughly around 65 to 70 percent private consumption, I am speaking, not even government, to our GDP. And if consumption is on a boom, there is a spending spree among the households, it will definitely going to have a boost to our GDP and we are growing strongly. My topic is sustaining this growth. Challenges, first is challenge. And recently I have published one newspaper article in Financial Times Asian version, which is called Asian Nikki. And there I have put forward with one of my PhD scholar in Delhi Technological University. We both of us have co-authored this paper, or this article, I should say. And there I have tried to focus on how is this consumption happened. And dear participants who are listening, this consumption has happened through a record fall in household savings in India. And that's the challenge. Our gross household financial savings today stand at 5.1% of GDP, which is a 47-year low as per the RBI data for the financial year 22-23 March end, which was published about two, three months back. Not only that, this, so, so this spending spree by the households of Indians, by the Indian households, 
is driven by large scale borrowing. That means debt. A closer look at RBI data will show that post COVID scenario, there has been a double digit, I repeat a double digit growth in house loan since May 2021 and the growth rate in automobile sector loan has also been maintaining a similar pace since April 2022. Borrowings by the Indian households from non-banking financial sector, non-banking financial sector has reached a staggering 2.4 trillion rupees in the current financial year as compared to somewhere around 214 billion rupees a year ago. So what has contributed that? Most of the Indians have anticipated that in future their income will rise and against a possible higher future income, Indians went for large scale borrowing and went for the spending spree. Apparently it has no problem because I spend more today, my income will increase and I can repay the loan. But the problem that happens is if something bad happens in the economy and I lose my job or my income level falls against a higher future income against which I have borrowed, if that does not materialize, then I am in a soup, it will lead to increase in non-performing assets and it will lead to a lot of troubles for the economy. More so the trouble will happen if there is an inflation increase which currently of course is stable. So this is a challenge. Any consumption expenditure in an economy that is financed through large scale borrowing will always be challenging. What about the opportunity? Well, one of the sector that is still untouched so called or has been stagnant in India is in the India's growth story I should say is the private investment sector which is being held at about 15 percent for the last 7, 8, 10 years neither growing nor shrinking and there is a huge opportunity in the private investment sector. Many reasons are not contributing to private investment. While public capital expenditure has been rising, private sector investment who are supposed to put in lot of money in expansion of their operation has been mostly stagnant. One of the reasons is of course, we speak of higher interest rate regimes. That is typically a problem for the Indian economy. Number two, uncertainty about the future growth or something which I think is too far fetched of at this current stage. And last but not the least are some supply shock issues that always exist. Having said all these things, this is an opportunity for Indian business to put in lot of money into the business and expand given the size of opportunity that exists for the Indians. Before I end, let me highlight one issue which is known mostly to everyone but I just wanted to stress upon. Globally, all shocks that have happened worldwide have a typical asset, asset boom, then burst and then we all know. So whether I go back to 1929 Great Depression or whether I consider the Japanese slump of the 1990s or the global financial crisis of 2008-9, there was a boom in the economy initially and that boom have ultimately translated into a burst because what I say is that it is a sort of a irrational exuberance 
or the growth in the stock market or the stock prices. Here also for the Indian economy, before I enter my talk, a small highlight that we are not in that situation. Because as of now, our macroeconomic, fundament, macroeconomic indicators are, are, our macroeconomic fundamentals are strong. As of now, we have a robust service sector. Our industrial base is okay. So, there is a severe opportunity, there is a good opportunity for India to carry forward this thing. And if we have to attain what our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has pointed out, Bikashit Bharat, a developed nation by 2047, India has to consistently grow by about 7 to 8 percent to achieve that. And that will not be possible by the sheer consumption financed by borrowing or by the government expenditure alone. Because capital expenditure by the government is extremely good and laudable, but the problem is that it is, has to be financed. Otherwise, it will going to crowd out private investment. So, therefore, the private sector has a huge role to play in India's growth story. Thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity.